YouTube is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing awesome. In this video, we're covering a CSGO optimization guide. We are going to be covering FPS, latency, and a little bit of visibility settings. Now, hear me out. I've come through a huge discovery with this game and high-end graphics cards. It's really weird. There's some weird latency results with high-end graphics cards if the GPU doesn't boost properly. Can't wait to talk to you guys about that. Stick through the video. It's gonna be really exciting to test. A lot of you guys have been asking for this video for a long time and I am sorry I haven't done it yet. But here we are, let's get it over and done with. Guys, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. Please like, it helped me out a lot. Please, I need the help with the YouTube algorithm. I don't get many views sometimes. It's a little bit rough and I really wanna go for 100,000 subscribers, guys. I wanna make this more of a full-time thing. I'd appreciate the support, guys. So. In saying that, let us go over to what I need to say at the beginning of every video you guys need to know about. 95% of optimization is basically hardware and setting it up correctly. I'm sorry if you guys have already seen this, but I need to mention it. It's really, really important that you set up your hardware and your windows properly. Okay, that's where you're gonna see the biggest improvements. You can only do so much with a game. Just really, really quickly, everything's covered here in the playlist. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would go over to the playlist and follow that if you haven't already to set up your BIOS, your Windows, your hardware correctly. Really, really important that you do that because you can try to optimize the game all you want. You're only gonna get a little bit out of, out of it. It really comes down to how you set up your hardware and your Windows, okay? Now, just to mention the things that make the biggest difference really quickly, Follow my optimization pack. It's gonna get everything sorted for you. Good RAM, speed and timings definitely help. Fast speed, lower timings, XMP, etc. A good CPU, overclocking your CPU to get a little bit more out of it. Good graphics card and overclocking your graphics card to get a little bit more out of it. Now hear me out. Games like CSGO and Valorant don't care about the graphics card too much. You could have a really low end graphics card with this game and a really high end CPU or memory kit. And you'd be fine, but it just depends on the kind of game that you play and how much GPU it needs to utilize. Stability of hardware. So no faults in your hardware, right? No bent pins, no faulty memory, no unstable overclocks overheating. Fresh windows install, especially if you have a really old one that's bloated. It's been around for a while, it's degraded. Power plan, timer resolution, graphics driver, graphics driver and settings for your graphics driver. Minimal background tasks, optimal game graphics settings. I mean, that's a given. Mouse with low delay, controller with low delay. I know this isn't a controller game, but I need to mention it too. You know, a decent enough polling rate, 1000 hertz for your mouse and controller. Keyboard with low delay and monitor with low delay. They're the biggest things that make the difference, guys. There's only so much you can do with other stuff, but here is my playlist to set it up correctly. Let's get on with the video. I don't want to waste your time. All right, let's quickly cover game launcher optimization. Okay, because everything else is covered in the Windows um, guy that I've just showed you. So I'd expect you guys to go ahead and follow that if you want the most out of your system. Now, let's quickly go to um, straight to remote play. Just turn remote play off. Um, broadcasting should be turned off. It should be already. Um, scrolling through here, a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter. Just turn in-game overlay off. I really don't recommend in-game overlay. That's really not gonna help you. Any kind of recording and overlays and hardware acceleration, just turn all that off, guys. That's all you really need to do. Now, launch options for CSGO. Guys, hear me out. I'm gonna test all the launch options, but like, honestly, like a lot of these really don't matter. You see a lot of launch options and a lot of guides and set your, you know, hertz and your frame rate and set this and that. And yeah, it's just like, it's we are wasting your time. There's so many things that will get overridden by the graphics driver or overridden by your auto executable or and whatever so ignore that the only thing that you really need to set is these three okay these are the ones i've got for testing so you can have net graph which should show the overlay this is for my testing software to actually work fps max is because i'm testing different at the moment i'm testing the different for this video different fps values to cap at and lo and behold, surprisingly, over 400 FPS is not a huge difference in latency, believe it or not. Anyway, so these are the kind of three that I'd recommend. No vid console and tick rate, that's it. And if you have an executable, you have the executable one there for your settings. So that's pretty much it. So just like no game overlay, um, like, you know, none of that stuff kind of running in the background, I'd recommend turning off. Now guys, this game will run on a potato, so there's a lot of things that don't really matter or make too much of a difference, even though this video is solely gonna be a test, uh, going around like talking about the latency with the different um, settings, just to show you guys how much it doesn't really matter too much in this game. But these are the kind of settings that I recommend for video, um, like starting off out, okay? Um, basically just 
<clears throat> resolution that you're comfortable with. We can get into stretch resolutions a little bit later. That's fine. But basically everything low. Texture streaming enabled, I'd recommend. Uh, boost player contrast enabled, multi-core rendering enabled. Basically everything turned off and low. Okay. So that's pretty much the settings that we're going to start with testing with. And then I'm going to test each individual setting, different resolutions, different launch options, different um, executables, all that sort of stuff. And we'll test that for latency. And you guys will actually find that there won't be a huge difference with a lot of stuff. I'll even test a couple of the pros configs. Uh, I guess like simple, some plays like simple, I'll, I'll throw their config on, maybe scream. I haven't really been in the CSGO scene for ages, guys, just to let you guys know. I did play CSGO pretty seriously back in 2015, 2016 when matchmaking got harder. And I believe I ranked up to like three quarters of the way and then stopped playing the game because of hackers. And I just gave up on the game at that point. But just so you guys know, I know what a smooth experience can be like in this game and I'm not no newbie to the game right so i've played the game and i played the game seriously at some stage just so you guys know so now a lot of people prefer obviously stretch resolution because you can see the player models and they're slightly bigger i should probably mention if you want slightly lower delay on lower resolutions or stretch resolutions if you can do force display scaling with custom resolution utility i would recommend that if it works on your display go check out my older videos on display scaling you can actually get a tiny little bit lower input lag forcing display scaling it's only about 0.3 milliseconds but it's still something otherwise if you just change your resolution in the graphics driver or just here it's going to be gpu scaling and that is still fine because the latency difference isn't huge but it's something that i really need to mention here and just real quickly i'll cover a couple other things now regardless whether you're on amd or nvidia uh, if you want to slightly, this is obviously not performance related and won't affect performance unless you're using it with NVIDIA and I'll explain that in a little bit. Really recommend like uh, image sharpening, especially if you run a lower uh, resolution, you know, 1024 by 768 or 1280 by 960. Uh, sharpening may help you quite a lot um, in the actual driver settings. So whether it be um, AMD or NVIDIA. NVIDIA, in really GPU heavy scenarios, you do lose a couple of frames. In CSGO, you shouldn't. Um, I know in some games like Battlefield and Warzone, you lose a couple of frames using sharpening, but on NVIDIA, but you shouldn't in CSGO. On AMD, you don't lose the frames regardless, but I'd really recommend that, especially if you're running a lower resolution for just visibility. And just in general, also, I'd recommend for this game, like cranking up your saturation. So you can do that in the NVIDIA control panel. You don't lose any frames on both AMD and uh, NVIDIA cranking up saturation. Just helps you see player models a whole lot easier. Something worth mentioning here. But if you've got really good monitor settings, um, it's worth just doing it on your monitor as well. If you've got sharpening or digital vibrance, uh, definitely something worth mentioning. Really quickly here, let's talk about like stretch resolutions and player models. Do you get any advantage playing like stretch? So there's uh, always pros and cons to this. Um, and a lot of you guys already know this, but I need to mention it in this video anyway for anyone who's new getting into this game, I guess. Um, native resolution will always look the clearest, obviously. Now, um, playing lower resolution and stretch resolution, you can potentially get a little bit lower input lag depending on the graphics card and the system that you have um, playing lower resolution. So there is that too, although it doesn't look as clear. And that's why I kind of mentioned the um, vibrance and sharpening, which could help. But you also get slightly stretched player models, as you can see here. So native resolution, look how kind of like thin the play model is. 4x3 is a very common resolution that a lot of people use. So this would also include um, 1024 by 768 or 1280 by 960. As you can see, quite stretched here. 5'4", really, really stretched. And the 16x10, just like kind of halfway in between. Now, a lot of players are playing 4'3 because this game is very brutal when it comes to, you know, first headshots you know it's kind of an instant kill sort of a thing so playing stretched helps them hit the player model easier it doesn't make the player model physically bigger it just makes the player model physically look bigger on your, your actual monitor so that's something worth mentioning the only thing with running these kind of uh, resolutions if you don't run native you actually lose a little bit of field view so there's a little bit of a disadvantage there but it's usually the kind of game where you don't need to worry too much about field of view you don't really need to be snapping around you kind of just like holding certain angles with your team so you'll see a lot of people kind of running that resolution definitely something worth mentioning here it is all personal preference at the end of the day, guys, what kind of like resolution you want to rock. Uh, for reference, I've tried all of them and I always went back to native resolution because my mouse would always feel a little bit finicky on a stretch resolution. Left and right would always feel faster than up and down, if that makes sense. Um, 
And there was a little fix that I did get into looking at making your left and right sensitivity slightly slower than up and down, but that's going to just kind of screw up your muscle memory a little bit. Um, and I just didn't like it. So I stuck with native when I played, but uh, there's definitely a slight advantage to playing stretched. You just kind of have to get used to this feeling a little bit faster than this um, at the end of the day. All right, let's talk about latency and my discovery with a major latency difference to do with the graphics card boost algorithm, which is something really, really interesting here. And I'll try my best to explain it to you guys. Basically, it seems that there's an input latency problem with a really high-end graphics card and this game at very, very low settings. It doesn't get the GPU to boost properly and you get a little bit of extra input added input lag. And I'll explain that in just a, a little bit further. I'll try to kind of smooth it out for you guys to explain how this works. Okay, hear me out. So this is on the AMD card, the 6900 XT. I am going to put the 2080 Ti in the system for you guys to test that too. But this is uncapped. So we're getting about 800 FPS. This is in Vertigo on a, in an offline map just to test, just so you guys know. So as you can see here, we're getting an average of like 800 FPS, okay? Look at the GPU and the megahertz on the GPU next to 38 degrees. See how it's boosting to about 814. This graphics card with my overclock, without an overclock boost to 2600, with my overclock boost to 2800. Here's the thing, because this C game is so CPU heavy, it doesn't even need the graphics card to boost. So it's only boosting to 800 megahertz, guys. We're talking 800 megahertz versus boosting to the factory 2600 megahertz. It's not gonna boost to the factory 26 megahertz because it's not a very GPU heavy game. That's when I found a big latency issue. And I'm gonna show you guys this right now in actual practice so there are latency results uncapped the gpu is boosting a little bit more because it is uncapped but watch this i'm going to cap to 400 something stable okay like that right and as you can see i'll reset the stats there we go now watch the latency here it's going to be about 14 milliseconds and that seems way too high and that's when i ran into a bit of an issue on stream Look at what the GPU is boosting to. It's only boosting to 500 megahertz. Watch what happens when I lock the core, still capped at 400 in just a sec. Okay, so that's our latency with, you know, the lowest resolution you're gonna play at 400 cap, 13.54 milliseconds. That is too high, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Well, we're gonna see. The, the card is only boosting to 500 megahertz. Now I have heard rumors that the pros say uncapped feels better, but why is that? Most of the pros have really high-end systems. They got really, really good graphics cards. And I'm gonna bet, and I'm gonna guess that the GPU isn't boosting properly and that is the issue. So watch what happens. I'm gonna go straight to the desktop, okay? Now, unfortunately with AMD cards, I haven't found another way to do this. Whereas with Nvidia cards, you can use MSI Afterburner to lock the core. I'm gonna go straight to performance and I'm gonna go to the overclock that I have on this thing, okay? As you guys see here, but I'm gonna set the minimum frequency, okay? So, I mean, it will set this to the absolute max it'll let me. And that's usually 100 megahertz underneath your overclock. So it's always going to boost to 2700 megahertz, okay? I'll apply those changes and let's go back into the game and watch what happens. So now we've forced the graphics card to actually boost properly. Now it seems to be jumping up and down a little bit. It doesn't seem to do that in 1080p. So I'll retest with 1080p, but see how it's trying to lock. Usually when I did, when I did this last night on stream, it was actually locking all the way, but I was running in 1080p. You should see a latency difference here. We should get all the way down to about 12 milliseconds because we have the core locked, like 11.62 milliseconds. See the difference there, guys, just because the GPU actually wasn't boosting properly. So I'm going to call it right now, AMD, if you've got a good card, if you play games that hardly use the graphics card, games like CSGO, Valorant, there is an input lag issue because the GPU boost algorithm doesn't boost properly. Look at that difference. We've got a difference in almost a millisecond um, and you'll see that scale probably a little bit more like with 1080p and higher resolutions. And I'll show you guys that in a second here, but look, that's quite a huge difference. And that might explain why some pros feel like it's slightly better uncapped because it's getting the GPU boost a little, to boost a little bit higher. Um, and then it, 
do you guys do you guys see what I'm saying here? I think you guys kind of understand here. There's an issue here. Now I'm gonna go test that on Nvidia right now, and I feel like the issue isn't as big on an on Nvidia because at least you hit GP Boost 2, which is around about a thousand something megahertz minimum. I'm pretty sure it'll always stay at that, whereas AMD seems to be kind of locking down on 500. So just to confirm, I'm going to do the same test in 1080p right now because I feel like the clock shouldn't be jumping up and down as much. Okay, now that we're in 1080p, see how the GPU boost is actually kind of holding. So it's about 2700 megahertz, 2695, roughly give or take. Um, I wish there was, I'm going to try to figure out a way you can lock it no matter what. It seems like at the lower resolution, it was bouncing up and down. Um, I'll see if I can figure that out. And then if I find a fix, I'll pin it in the video description. But see we're at 2080p, uh, sorry, 1080p and look at the latency here. We're around about right where we should be. It should be around about 12 milliseconds, give or take in 1080p. That's with the um, GPU boost locked. So let's test this now with the GPU boost locked and let's test it again in 1080p with it not locked and you guys will see exactly what happens. Okay, I pretty much caught it. 12.12 milliseconds with the GPU locked. I'm now going to unlock the GPU and we'll see what results we get. So just so you guys know what I'm doing, I'm setting this back to the default zero. Okay. And we will be testing, I'm going to put my 2080 Ti in the system very, very shortly. So we'll find out what happens. It'd be interesting. So 12.12 milliseconds. Okay. Now the GPU is only boosting to about 557. <clears throat> give or take, pardon me. Okay. And look at the latency difference here. Now we're back up to 14 milliseconds, like almost an extra two milliseconds just because the GPU isn't boosting properly. So it's not even about, you know, reflex or radian anti-lag. It's nothing like that. It's literally got to do with the GPU boost algorithm. And the problem goes away a little bit uncapped, but that still doesn't make the problem go away. It's still kind of there. So I'm going to go test this. I'm going to go put my 2080 Ti in right now for you guys because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm going to go all out um, and I'm going to test this with Nvidia and see if the same issue happens and I'll test with a locked and unlocked, um, which is really interesting. So um, potentially there's a lot of people that are getting a lot of extra input lag um, because of this and they don't know about it. It's kind of a big deal. Come on guys, look at the results there. We've got 12.12 milliseconds before. <clears throat> now we have an extra... Uh, you know, almost two and a half milliseconds, almost two, an extra two milliseconds just because the GPU isn't boosting because um, it feels like it doesn't need to. Um, really interesting find. This is kind of huge at the end of the day. So guys, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go put my NVIDIA card in, DDU it. I'm going to test it with the 2080 Ti. All right, guys, Um, I obviously have the PCs apart right now, as you can see. Um, This is 1080p and it locked at 400 FPS. Okay, so you guys know. And the GPU is still boosting on NVIDIA. So this is a 2080 Ti. It's boosting to 1350, which is what I thought, which is GPU boost 2, I believe. So it doesn't have the same issue that um, AMD has. And there's our latency there, 11.25. So I'm going to go ahead and change resolution. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and lock the GPU boost. And I'll show you guys how I do that. Quickly, I'm just going to open MSI after the burner, click Curve Editor. And then I'm going to find, I believe this thing boosts to about 2000. So I'll just... Or do we just do 1950 just to test it, right? So I'll press L to lock and then I'll go out of that and then I'll press apply. Okay, so that'll lock 1950. Well, it should lock 1950 in the game. So as you can see here, now it's locked to 1950 and we'll see if there's a difference. So we got 11.25. It's time to retest it. Let's see what happens. And see if we get lower than 11.25. I'm going to say no because I don't think it needs that much boost anyway. But at least we've found an issue here with the AMD boost algorithm. Turns out I'm wrong. Locking the actual core has helped latency on um, NVIDIA 2. Not as much, but it still helped. Uh, 10.25. 6.8 and so we're on 11.25 so yeah I'm um, obviously the issue is not as much um, on Nvidia because it still boosts to the normal so Nvidia will boost to 1350 a uh, minimum absolute minimum whereas AMD will boost much lower I guess that's some kind of a power saving thing but clearly locking your core actually helps latency in a really CPU bound game so I'm going to go ahead and test that with the lowest res possible um, 1024 by 768 so kept at 400 FPS not locking the GPU core at 1024 by 768 low, best case scenario, we have 10.6 milliseconds latency. Now let's test with locking the GPU at 1950. 
so we've locked the call 1950 ran 1024 by 768 capped at 400 you guys know the drill all right 10 dot four eight so it didn't really help i'd call that within benchmark variation so it's interesting how it helped in 1080p but didn't really help in 1024 by 768 that is interesting so conclusion is it affects on both cards amd and nvidia in really cpu bound games um but it does depend on maybe the scenario a little bit so i mean it's not a bad thing to just lock the core especially if you play these types of games anyways this is kind of a huge find so I was able to at least conclude that it affects both on AMD and NVIDIA, but on NVIDIA not as much because it still hits GPU Boost 2.0, which was 1350 for us at a minimum, whereas the AMD would go all the way down to like 500 megahertz. So obviously that problem can be alleviated, which is great, by either using NVIDIA MSI Afterburner to lock the core, or AMD's driver software to set a minimum core boost, which is great. So now I'm going to put my... AMD card back in and my NVIDIA card back into the streaming PC and I can continue recording normally. What I'm interested in is why am I getting slightly lower latency on NVIDIA? Um, you know, technically speaking, it is the like, slower card, but this, this game doesn't need a good card. So what's going on here? Um, now, for reference, this is the latest NVIDIA driver, guys. I did all the optimizations from my video without GeForce experience, my latest optimization guide. Okay, with the AMD card, I just did the basic tweaks like I showed you in the thing, but I was using not the recommended driver for AMD. So I'm going to roll back to the recommended driver for AMD, not the optional, because I was on the optional for the COD beta. So let's go test that because I want to see these numbers on AMD. And if I don't, that's kind of an interesting find at the end of the day. This won't affect all games, but it's an interesting find when it comes to CSGO anyway. So let's see what happens. All right, guys, so it's the next day. Um, this video has been a bit of a nightmare for me. I switched over the 2080 Ti to test, and then I decided to put my 6900 XT back in, and then it decided to not work. Got VGA light, tried it on another motherboard, VGA light. Now, I did have a few weird issues with this graphics card when I first got it. So in saying that, from what I saw, it looked like AMD had slightly higher latency for this game, but it's not conclusive. So I'm RMAing the card when I get it back. I'll test it and I'll keep you guys updated with that. I'll probably pin it in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and test it on an AMD card. So for now, I decided to continue the video with the 2080 Ti, redo all the tests. So I'm going to show you guys all the results now and sort of the end game on what's going on. But I need to conclude the two big findings that I've found, um, especially for these kind of games. So these kind of games, if you have a, a really decent uh, graphics card, like I've said that many times at the beginning of this video and throughout, when you have such a good graphics card, the GPU doesn't boost properly. So on AMD, we saw it hardly boosted at all. We we're only hitting about 500 megahertz. That was causing about a two millisecond latency difference. On Nvidia, we saw it would still boost, but not as much as proper boost. So it wouldn't boost to 500, it would boost to maybe 13. 50, which is GPU Boost 2, not GPU Boost 3. Now that would alleviate some of the problem, but the problem would still be there. There was still a difference between just locking the core, which you can see right now we're locked at 1935. If we didn't have it locked, it would just be at GPU Boost 2, which would be 1350. And if we had AMD and we didn't lock it, it would literally be at 500. And that causes the latency problem. So if you've got a good graphics card and you're playing games that are really CPU heavy, really CPU bound and the graphics card's hardly working and the GPU isn't boosting all the way, there is a latency problem. And I don't know why. I don't know if that's got to do with some kind of a power saving um, implementation in the card or the card's not uh, fully kind of ready to go. Um, and it's kind of hard to explain like, um, you know, the graphics card's kind of like in a sleep state. Maybe. Maybe that's what the input lag issue is. I don't know. But I feel like this is actually such a big deal that um, AMD and NVIDIA developers need to know about it. They need to implement something in their driver which can force the boost clock no matter what. Um, ideally, that would be good, especially in games like this, because there's lots of games like this, guys, not just CSGO, like Valorant, plenty of other games that this issue is here and locking the core is going to fix that issue. So there's a latency difference and there's a latency problem with the GPU boost algorithm on AMD and NVIDIA in CPU bound games. You need to lock the core. It's more of an issue, sorry about the kids, more of an issue in 
on an AMD graphics card because at least with the Nvidia graphics card, it does at least boost to GPU Boost 2. Now, this might be more of a problem on a 3090. We're obviously only testing with the 2080 Ti now. So I don't know with the 3090 because I sold my 3090. I don't know with the 3090 where it might not even hit GPU Boost 2. I'm not sure, but it's something to be aware of because we're talking about roughly it was two millisecond difference with the AMD card as far as in terms of latency and the Nvidia card one millisecond difference because Nvidia was at least boosting to boost algorithm two. So that's interesting. And I've also found another huge thing huge huge thing that you guys need to be aware of okay so see how we kept at 400 fps and you guys are going to see my uh, test that i'm about to show you that 400 is the most stable and there's really no point going over that and i'll show you why very very shortly but there is an issue with this so a lot of you guys say that timer resolution doesn't do much and you're kind of right in a lot of ways because the difference between the game's forcing it to one millisecond and i'll show you guys this right now um, the game will be forcing it to one millisecond as soon as you open a game and default usually windows when you're not doing much It's usually about 15 Forcing it to 0.5 back in the day you used to help a lot for a lot of older games and all the hardware You get a huge boost now. It doesn't really do much. It lowers your driver latency um, Substantially, but it doesn't really do much and it's not really that noticeable in game Some people notice it in the desktop with your mouse input feeling a little bit better a little bit like snappier but this as actually really interesting because watch what happens here right especially with csgo so say i've turned this off right i've stopped it completely all right so now it's just at the default one millisecond because the game's open sometimes if you have discord open or some other things it'll force um, one look at my fps now see how it's not hitting 400 properly right whereas timer resolution kind of forces windows to update with the cpu uh quickly and it will make sure that it's always kind of at its full limit it's kind of like similar to GPU boost, but for the CPU, I guess. Um, so that kind of fixes that issue. So, you know, if I was going ahead and trying to do latency tests without timer resolution forced at max all the time, absolute max 0.5, um, my FPS would be bouncing around and not actually hitting and capping at the 400. And um, there's slightly more frames as well in this game from what it seems, or at least bouncing around at uncapped with the timer resolution on. So there you go, guys. Um, there is a reason why I've kind of included this. I wasn't aware about that, the issue with CSGO, but from my testing in the past, I was aware that it affected driver latency and uh, one or two FPS in some games um, and made mouse input feel a little bit better. So that's why I always recommend it. Like it didn't do any harm, but as you can see, um, especially with CSGO, it's like really recommended. So I'm going to put it back to 0 0.5, okay? Um, and let's go back to the game and you'll see we'll be getting consistent 400 FPS now. So that's fixed that issue. So that's kind of another big find that you guys need to be aware of. Now I'm going to stop rambling on. I believe this video has already gone to 20 minutes. I'm going to go over the results with you guys right now. Okay, so I will provide um, a config, um, even though it's not really needed. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter in this game. I'll provide it in the Google Drive for you guys, if you want to see. Also, just to let you guys know that um, I did test some pro player settings with their configs, launch options, and graphics settings exactly. Um, just to show you guys, there's a lot of stuff that just really doesn't matter in this game. It really isn't. Just get good, just get good hardware, guys. Um, set up things correctly, the basic things. Um, so I did simple in Nico's config just to let you guys know. So let's go over the results here. Um, and I did just compile everything very, very quickly because this video has taken me a long time. Um, anyway, continuing on. So let's go with this is going to be um, sort of best case scenario almost. So. This is on the 5950X, right? With SMT disabled, pardon me. Just because a lot of you guys would want to test hyperthreading on and off, whatever. Okay, so SMT disabled, the lowest graphic settings and a very, very low resolution, 1024 by 768. Uncapped, getting an average of 850 FPS in this scenario. Um, and we've got 10.35 milliseconds latency. So I'll continue on with the results. And also guys stay tuned because I'm going to show you that there is no difference between an AMD CPU and an Intel CPU when it comes to latency. Um, and that's one thing that I've, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking me to debunk. It's already been proven um, by many people on YouTube. Gamers Nexus and Tech Yes City has done a video on that, but I'm going to continue on with the results. I want to show you guys and prove you guys that too, because there's some people that are very, very funny about that sort of thing, AMD versus Intel. 
Um, continuing on, so now we decide to cap the FPS to 500. As you can see here, it's pretty much the same. If anything, it's a little bit more stable. Right, where was I? So um, the reason why um, it might be the same or more stable is because of the game engine, right? Uh, obviously there is a uh, slightly lower input lag with uncapped, but there's a point of diminishing return after 400 with most games that I've tested, um, which is kind of conclusive here too. At the same time, um, you know, it could be a game engine thing, right? So playing uncapped, pointless, unless you don't know about the GPU boost algorithm problem and then uncapping is getting the GPU boost to boost a little bit harder and then that input lag goes away. So if you can cap at 400 and force the GPU boost clock and get the low latency and it's more stable. Does that make sense? Whereas some people like don't know about the GPU clock boost clock issue now and they're uncapping they're like, oh, it feels better. And it doesn't necessarily feel better because of more frames because you'll even see the 1% and 0.1s. They're kind of, when you jump around, when you actually move around, they're going to be a bit different. But um, it's like sort of, what was I trying to say? You get the low input lag still. And it's still like pretty much exactly the same because you fix the boost GPU boost clock issue. Whereas if you have it uncapped, uh, you know, it's going to boost maybe the GPU a little bit more. Um, sorry for getting off track. Uh, it's been honestly one of those days, like a couple of these days trying to do this video. It's been a bit of a nightmare. Let's continue on. Right. So where were we? So lowest uh, 1024 by 768 at 400 FPS. So I kept it 400 FPS. As you can see, maybe there's a reason why the game developers, um, you know, recommend the 400 capped. Um, it's by default 400 capped. They probably know better than us when it comes to the game engine limitations. I genuinely think they're correct about capping it at 400 FPS. And I believe that you should optimize the rest of your system around that and keep it capped at 400. As long as you fix the timer resolution issue, right? And as long as you fix the GPU uh, boost clock issue, as you can see here, like uh, that's like that's the averages that we're getting. And even the 1% and 0.1s are still very high. Look, the 0.1s are, are 278. Like it's very, very still like good enough. You know what I mean? And in an actual match at the end of the day, guys, you jump into an actual match, um, you know, 128 tick and you've got smokes going around, you've got flashbangs going around, a bunch of players, uh, you're not going to be able to get a consistent, you know, 850 FPS or whatever. Does that make sense? So yeah. Anyway, continuing on, let's go to lowest cap to 200 because this is what I'm like, it's getting to a point like, all right, well, let's test lower FPS values because how much of a difference is it going to make on this engine? Because usually with a lot of engines, when you start getting down to this FPS, you do see a big latency difference, but not necessarily. We went up to 11.27 milliseconds. So it wasn't even, obviously the 1% and 0.1s are much lower now. So the game wouldn't feel as good, but it's only like a millisecond more which is interesting so then tells me that you can definitely be very competitive off on 200 i needed to take it an extra step further um capped at 100 fps 11.67 milliseconds this would feel not so nice this one percent and 0.1s but uh, you technically could still be competitive on that those frames just saying guys you know if you had a mouse with low input lag monitor with low input lag and this was consistent and smooth i mean you could probably get away with it you know throw g-sync on and then it would maybe make the latency to 12 milliseconds you could still be very competitive and then it would feel smooth with that fps but isn't that interesting uh interesting how this game engine works um in terms of actual latency and fps now i'm like okay this is getting a bit ridiculous because i was expecting to see a much higher average latency with 100 frames i'm like let's just go to the next level let's go to 60 fps and it's like boom there it is okay 15.66 milliseconds it's like all right well this is kind of unplayable so there you go um as you can see so 60 fps uh, definitely no go but um i would say you know 200 fps is definitely it can be very very nicely competitive one now continuing on uh lowest i redid the tests at uh, lowest 400 fps at 1024 by 768 i just wanted to redo the test for the next test so 10.31 um, now I decided to turn SMT on so I had um, hyper threading or SMT technology turned off to start off these tests um, just to show you guys that a lot of you guys say turn off hyper threading turn off SMT you get more frames and that's maybe true in one or two games you get a couple more frames but throughput latency if anything can sometimes have a negative effect because by having all these calls and threads in the background you kind of you've got more stuff for everything to run in the background that windows needs all its services drivers 
processes, programs, the things that you might have open in the background. So it's going to make the game more consistent. The game is clearly not running on all those threads and calls, right? But look at our like average input lag. And I found that in my full two months that I tested on, on Twitch, uh, st streaming, testing everything that with my 10900K, uh, throughput latency in all games were better with hyperthreading left on on my 10900K. And the same goes to say, even though you could call that a little bit within benchmark variation, the fact that it hasn't harmed anything, leave it on. Leave hyperthreading on, leave SSMT on, okay? Because, you know, what? You know, like my Rust video, I got an extra 20 FPS, whoop de doo but, you know, through throughput latency, you're just better off leaving it on. Okay, so continuing on. So now we're leaving SMT on for the rest of the tests, just so you guys know. Um, I ended up just showing you guys that um, I a lot of you guys say, and a lot of guys out there say disable CPU 0 and CPU um, 1. So if you had hyper threading off or a CPU that doesn't have hyper threading, like a 9700K where it's just the threads, so just the cores, you would obviously just disable CPU 0. But because this is, uh, I've got um, SMT on or hyper threading on this 5950. X, I need to disable the core and the thread. So that's what I've done here. Okay, so just disabling core zero basically. All right, and a lot of people say this makes a huge difference and I've always said, no, it doesn't. Um, unless maybe you have a really bloated Windows with lots of programs running in the background and Windows is really pegging, um, you know, CPU one um, or CPU core zero or whatever. And um, maybe you have like a, a lower end CPU. Maybe, maybe that'll make a difference then. Maybe, but in real reality, look, it, it hasn't helped at all. If anything, it may have made it a little bit worse as you can see, but uh, I'll call that within benchmark variation. So obviously I turn that off for the next test. Now disabling full screen optimizations. So uh, 1809, you wanted to do it. And under 1809, you wanted to do it. Over 1809, you don't want to disable full screen optimizations. And this is proven here. Again, um, obviously I'd already proved that in my spreadsheet that I tested two months on Twitch, but just to show you guys, do not disable full screen optimizations if you are on the newer Windows builds, okay? Uh, full screen optimizations, Windows has actually done something with it. It's actually good now, leave it on. The only time you'll get the added latency is when you actually physically do that for like a split second. That's when you'll get the, um, the input lag. Um, and then when that goes away, you're, you're fine, okay? Whereas with full screen optimizations disabled, you wouldn't see that. And there was an input lag difference in 1809 and beforehand where it would be a millisecond lower. That is not the case now, okay? So that's full screen optimizations disabled, 10.53. Let's go back to where we were, um, 10.15 with full screen optimizations on, not disabled. So leave it. Don't use compatibility tab, all right? So did I have a photo of me doing that here? I thought I did, but I clearly didn't. Sorry about that. You guys know what I'm talking about, compatibility tab. I'll just quickly show you guys so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, Steam, Steam apps, common, and Counter-Strike. So a lot of guys will go ahead and do this, all right? Disable full screen. Do not do this if you're on the new Windows builds, all right? All right, go Winver. 1809 and under, do it. Newer builds after that, no, don't do it. Easy. Most of you or all of you are going to be on the latest build, so don't do it. All right, continuing on. Obviously, I I'll leave, I'll turn that back off and I'll leave full screen optimizations on. I want to test high priority. Okay. Um, it's not doing anything. Maybe really back in the day when we had like, you know, Pentium CPUs, this actually did something. It doesn't leave it, just leave it as normal priority. Don't set it in high priority. It's not helping you at all. It's not helping your frames. It's not helping your latency. If anything, it might be making your latency a little bit worse from what I can see here. And that's what I've proven before as well. But I want to do it specifically for this game because I know a lot of you out there will say, oh, do high priorities. I just want to get out of the way. Please stop. Don't do it. Okay. Now, ultra low latency mode because I had the NVIDIA card in. We we're using the NVIDIA card. I've obviously, once again, tested this in this game and many other games, ultra low latency mode on in a CPU bound game. This is useless unless you're over 97% GPU usage. And I don't even know if this works on DirectX 9. I think it only works on DirectX 11 anyway, but I just turned ultra low latency mode on in the driver to ultra and there's no difference. Okay. So there you go. Moving on. I, I mean, it's within benchmark variation. So I'd say to the point where it's actually just not doing anything because, you know, 10.15 was the best that we got. So, you know, you're going to have a better bit of benchmark variation. Now, um, continuing on, now I wanted to test resolution, so we're going to stay at capped at 400, we're going to stay at the lowest settings, we're going to stay with SMT on, the hyper-threading technology on, whatever you want to call it, 
changing resolution, you see a GPU usage goes up a little bit. We're at 15 there. We're at 18 there. Latency comes up a little bit too, which is interesting. So obviously, I've discovered this with other games. Lower res, even if you do have a really good card. So lower res on a really bad card, you're going to get more frames, right? Because there's less stress on the card. But if you've got a really good card to the point where this card, a 2080 Ti, is overkill for this game, there is still a slight difference by going lower resolution. Not to the point where it really pays off versus visibility, but to the point where it's like, it's measurable, it's noteworthy. Maybe there is a reason why some of the pros are playing really, really low resolutions, not just for stretch, because you see a lot of guys play 1280 by 960 or 1024 by 768 and not 1440 by 1080. So, I mean, there is something to that. So take that as you will. That is up to you. It's personal preference at the end of the day. Personally, I'd rather be, if I want to play 4.3, beyond 1440 by 1080, um, because like there's a difference of like, from what we see, maybe 0 0.5 milliseconds, you'll see in a sec. It's like 1080p. Um, but, you know, if you want the best of the best, 1024 by 768, cap it to something stable, like 400, you know, time of resolution, lock your GPU clock, do all the other optimizations I recommend in my other videos. Boom. Uh, that's the best of the best that you'll be able to get with your good hardware. Moving on. Um... 1080p so which is interesting here it's kind of like obviously you get benchmark variation but a gpu usage went up to 26 and does the average there so it looks it looks lower than you know this resolution but that doesn't really mean anything there's always a little bit of variation you got to take that into consideration so you know um just like ultra low latency mode right we saw a bit of a difference there but that like i said i'd call that within benchmark variation so it's just not doing anything um you have to take that into consideration because it can depend on the temperature of the room Oh, with this um, Arduino tool that I'm using, there's always going to be a little bit of variation. I mean, I could always do like a thousand samples per take, but there's just it's that's just too time consuming. That's just a waste in my opinion. So yeah, 1080p is so you know like for me, if I was to play 43, I'd probably go 1440 by 1080 for the the better pixels, better visual quality. But you know, like there is a difference going all the way down to this resolution. Um, it's measurable on a really high end card, as you can see here. It's measurable, you know. Um, so that's interesting if you're fine with your game looking at like a potato, but I mean a lot of pros are so now let's crank up the resolution We've got um, uh, this is 2k resolution. I'm obviously using DSR for NVIDIA um, To do this so I can keep the same monitor Which is a 360 with the same refresh rate, but it doesn't matter because it's just putting those pixels loads on the card And that's the whole point of this so 52% GPU usage um, and you know, our latency comes up a little bit, so that go figure. Now, here's where it gets super, super interesting 4K, once again, just like I've seen in many games, we're at 90, 89% GPU usage. I can't read that too well, man. A little bit blurry, 89% GPU usage. So, yeah, latency's come up a lot, a lot, as you can see there. So, yeah, I mean, found that kind of, you know, that was to, to be expected. That's because of the GPU usage going up. So, Moving on, um, right, so this is the game settings that I was rocking uh, to do all those tests. I don't know why I took that photo. I think I was going to do a compiled guide, but I decided to just show you guys the screenshots instead because I'm really done with this video. It's been a bit of a nightmare. Like FYI, I got DDoS on, on Twitch. Thank, thank you very much to the console uh, showing my IP. So I had change my dynamic IP and now my card is broken so it's been it's been one of those days but I'm persevering and we're going to get this video done boys now um yeah hit the subscribe button to support me please now lowest I went back to 1080p just to, so, so we could get a base 10.31 so um you know that's our base again I'm going to stick with 1080p for the rest of these tests um next uh so medium settings yeah so um i was going to test each individual setting and then i realized there's so many things in this game that just doesn't matter so i decided to once again like my other videos compile a bunch of settings obviously it'll affect differently on different graphics cards if you have a really potato graphics card you changing some things to medium could make a big impact on frames you'd have to have a really potato card maybe like a 960 i don't know but um i assume a lot of you just have good hardware honestly but um, I know some people don't and that's cool. So obviously like if it's affecting your frames by going medium, like that's going to affect your latency just so you guys know, right? And the GPU usage too. Uh, that's what I always see a common thing scale with. So those are the kind of medium settings end up rocking. 
um, and that's the latency. So the latency did come up a little bit because of medium settings because the GPU usage is a little bit higher, but maybe not as much as if you had a really potato GPU, it'd be way worse, right? So that's interesting. Um, now, ultra settings, I went all out with ultra settings. That's why I end up rocking with the ultra settings, as you can see here. I just turned everything on, dude. Absolutely everything cranked up to the max on. So GPU usage has gone up to 42% and 10.84 milliseconds. So what did we get before? Yeah, so not that bad considering we've got everything cranked up, but because we have a good card, but there still is a notable difference because of the GPU usage. So there you go. Everything cranked up with anti-aliasing. And I had like eight times anti-aliasing and multi-sampling anti-aliasing. So I had FF FXAA on and it's like two types of anti-aliasing together. Um, so I found that kind of interesting. Anyway, moving on, um, I wanted to, I went back to lowest 400 FPS with SMT on 1080p and I wanted to actually join a match. So for the record, this is actually 128 tick because in the local server, it wasn't 128 tick because it won't go 128 tick, even though I try to force it, right? And this was free for all 128 tick um, in the server browser with 18 players. Okay, so a lot going on. Right, like a lot going on Just to show you uh, how much this would scale from me testing offline versus testing in an actual match with a lot of stuff going on. And this would be worst case scenario free for all with 128 tick because in an actual match, say playing uh, Face It or ESCA um, or, you know, something like that, it's, you know, it's not going to be as stressful on the server um, and on your PC. So there you go. Really good results there. Now, obviously I could only do like 28, um, samples. I believe I did another lot of samples. There you go. 29 samples, 10.58. Obviously there's a variation and there's also variation in the server. So it's still good. Okay. So not too much of a difference from what we saw in, um, actually testing offline. So just so you guys could see that. Now back um, into the test range, I decided to test a, diff a couple of different pro settings. Simples config, um, obviously we did uh, for simples, we did launch options, config options, video options, everything. Maybe everything apart from his, no, no, it's his sense in his bindings, everything, it was everything. Um, and that's what he's getting. And I'm going to assume the reason why he's playing uncapped is because of this GPU boost issue. Him playing uncapped probably makes his GPU boost a little bit higher and he feels the lower input lag because of that. Whereas he could probably be much better off capping to a stable frame rate and then locking his GPU boost clock. And I believe he is on an AMD GPU now too. So it's even worse. So yes, he does need to lock that GPU uh, clock. And that makes sense why he's playing on cap at the moment with that config. I know they always change settings. So Nico's config, same thing again. Uh, that's the latency for Nico's config. So um, as you guys can see here, there's not a lot that really makes a difference. Um, and there's no point in me really testing anything else in the game. Uh, FYI, I had a couple of guys on stream ask me to test a couple of different like uh, commands, seal underscore idiot one, you know, stuff like that. And I'm just like, dude, None of it did anything. Um, I even in, end up testing. Um, right, sorry, I had to get it up. Mac Q mode. So minus minus one is auto. There's a couple of different values. I don't know what auto is, um, but you also have uh, zero, one, and two. Those are the other values that are accepted. I tested all of them. Minus one, zero, one, and two. It didn't do anything. Maybe it'll do something on a really, really, really old system. Or maybe the game developers have locked it out. I believe our game developers have locked a lot of things out and they'll just force a certain value anyway. Like motion blur. Like motion blur didn't even work when I had it on when I was doing tests. So thought you guys might find that interesting. That wraps up the video. A lot of stuff that doesn't matter. Don't ask me to test more stuff on this game because it really doesn't matter. The things that matter, like I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, get good hardware, good monitor, good mouse low delay, keyboard with low delay, good RAM and CPU, graphics card doesn't matter too much with this game as you can see, but regardless of the graphics card, lock the GPU boost and do timer resolution, those things help a lot. Set up your Windows correctly with my Windows optimization guide um, and get all that set up properly with the correct driver and the driver settings and all that stuff, right? Power plan, all that stuff, because that stuff makes the difference. So guys, this video, oh my god, it's been a nightmare and it's it's gone for way too long and I have to edit it now too. So um, let's hope these next game optimization guides can cut more to the chase. So the guys that are still watching this now, like I love you guys. I appreciate you. It's been one of those weeks, dude. I've got a dead card. I, I had, you know, I had to call my ISP because I got like um, 
you know, DDoSed on stream last night, doing this, testing this stuff, it's like one of those weeks. But you know what? Persevering. I'm gonna go edit this video now. I'm gonna make it happen. Love you guys. Take it easy. Catch us later. Bye. Oh, and one thing I forgot. Latency on Intel versus AMD. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to my old video. My 10900K. Uh, I believe I had a 3090 here. Okay. And I had, you know, high engine RAM, high overclock on the CPU, all the optimizations possible. Um, this is 1080p, low settings with the same config. This is the latency I'm getting. 10.49. So there you go. What does that say? That there's really no difference between AMD and Intel as far as throughput latency. I think that's enough evidence. I, I, I can provide more and I will. But the only thing that I want to test is AMD graphics card, but I need to get my card back. So there you go, guys. No difference. All right.